Good morning. This is the job today. Okay, what's happened on this particular house is they've put on a tin roof, but they haven't put the tie downs in. Uh, they have on that side. That side's all done. But to the left hand side was an old tile roof and the builder who, who did it didn't put the tiles, the tie downs in. And that was because that was, they decided to change to a tin roof last minute. So we now have to lift that roof and put tie downs in there because the house has just been sold. So just a cautionary tale. Don't cut corners when you're doing renos comes back to bite you especially nowadays with all the building inspections they've got happening so we're going to put some big rods in down the wall I'll show you what we got so we're going to take this plate we're going to bolt it to the rafters and then we're going to take that rod and put it down a wall hook it onto a piece of 12 mil rebar and then we're going to use this go through these holes and hold it all down um, <coughs> then we're also going to triple grip every other rafter so the first thing we have to do is remove the screws and we'll get on to that I'll only show you little bits of that because it'll bore you to death See that dirty patch on the roof there? Uh, and there's one out the front as well. That was all solar panels. So to give you an idea of what kind of a mistake this was not tying it down, the owner has had to have all those solar panels removed so I can get access under the sheets to do the tie downs. I've left the screws in the top and the second from top row. Um, the main idea behind that is look I've got to get in down here so now I can lift and get at it so that's the whole plan now when you take out screws if you have a look at that one see there's two screws there one that has a washer and one that doesn't have a washer I can reuse the one with the washer so when you take them out try and take them out with the washer sometimes they split and you lose the washer that one there will have to be turfed and I'll have to replace that with a new screw. This is going to sit there like that. The rod will come from the bottom up and through there and then we'll screw put him in with a nut and bolt in place now this I'll show you afterwards is actually right next to a ceiling joist so I'm actually having to go through both of them to reverse okay oops get you back up okay so we've got the 100mm bolts We are all going through the back here. Let's see how it fit. Let's give them a test before we die. Oh, yep. That makes it. Yep, that makes it. Alright, so now we're going to do the tie down bit so that plate can come off. Just do this quickly. Okay, take the plate off quickly. 
I just pre-drew a dose because really it sucks once you get going and you have to do it. Alright, now I'm going to show you what we do. So, just to give you an idea of where you get your measurements from. That's the back of your wall down to your eave, okay? We're talking 290, say 300. We'll just round it to 300. Okay. <coughs> so, these have to be 1,200 down from the top, according to the engineer. So we know we've got 300 of brick there. That means it has to be at least 900 down. Now, checking this. This is 1,400 long, so it gives us a little bit of play at the top. So if we make that just a minimum 900, okay, that'll make it 1,300, give us 100 at the top. But I'm going to make it 950 because I don't really want it to have to cut off the top. Now how I mark where it is, see this one hanging down? That's bang on the pearl, so I want it to come right to there. Okay, 9.50 and now I'm going to drill a hole through there and we'll put a rod through there and then we're going to catch it with this hook here. That's how we're going to do it. So watch, I'll just go forward. So that is not long enough to go through both walls, but it will catch the other wall. Okay. 12 millimeter rebar. And put it in the hole. 12 mil hole I just drilled. Knock it in. That's now going in the other brick. Once it gets flat, grab yourself another piece of 12 mil rebar. him in about 10 20 mil so once we hook that it's in both bricks and we'll patch that at the end give it a little paint you won't even notice that all right now for the fun bit and i don't really know how to show you this we're about to go fishing here we go we know it's directly down there it's actually painting the bark because i've got all sorts of things there now if i measured it correctly there you go. Just took myself a fish. Take this. I'm going to put that over there. Like so. Take him. Just wind down now. Okay. So all we're doing now is bringing this down. Now, if you want to know why I'm struggling to film this, it's because it's stuck under a sheet in a roof and pushing down on my head. I'm trying to do all this stuff up while trying to film this so you guys know what to do. So, yeah, better subscribe because <laughs> this is killing me. Anyway, bit of fun. What can I say? Uh, okay, loving it. Okay. So. Alright, that's just finger tight. And the reason that is is because I don't want it to come off the rebar. It's nice and caught on the rebar. And that's done. Okay, so what I'll do now. Rattle gun. Oh, gonna knock the back in so it doesn't spin. Two six.
Okay. I tightened with the rattle gun. In the back, it's those bolts because I find you just give them a hit in and they don't spin. Um, makes life a lot easier. And you can see because the ceiling joist is hard up against the rafter there, I've had to use 100 mil bolts. If the ceiling joist isn't there, I use, well, I could only find 70 mil, but I'd probably use 60 mil normally. Um, I only had 70 in the hardware store. We're a bit short of stuff still after COVID, so that's how it all works. Now, the tie down. I actually went and bought myself one of those. Okay, it's just a ratchet thing, but otherwise I was just finding it was taking too long with uh, trying to do it by hand. So this way, just up it nice and quickly. Nice and tight, it doesn't have to be tight too much, it's to stop the lift, it's not to, to come up with any sorry, it's tied in on that. Spinning him off. Can we go with the second? Alright. loves me when he puts this in the council. Now if I'm any half decent editor, you just watch that at like 700 times the normal speed of the world. Um, okay, so I'll run a few, a few things. Uh, the engineer specified that the plate that I'm now tight, um, tightening onto is 6mm and so that's what we have. We have it at 6mm. The rod is standard. You get it at the park pistol. The rebar through the wall is 12mm and these screws are M8. So the engineer also specified that in between every single tie down, so that means every other after has to have one of these that called triple grips. It's just to hold it all together and tie it down to the roof. That was the sheet just falling on my head. There you go, good times people. That's what you get to enjoy. up don't worry that'll happen a few more times today it's the joys of it because of the wind here okay so all i'm going to do now i'm screwing this because like i said you can't wield a hammer in here it's just ridiculous so i have 30 mil tech screws that i need to hold everything in place You'll see when I put on the plate, I tack it in place first and then I pull it out. The other thing is, as time goes on, this wood gets so hard. And I'm not talking so much about the, the pine, but this carry. Or just turns into rock. You can't get, you can't get anything into it without pre-drilling it so you might as well just drill it in the start. It's 
them. It certainly does make life interesting. Yeah, just an interesting point. You see all the um, low ins insulation, so all the stuff here, right? Um, yesterday we were using an angle grinder because this is like a wind tunnel. It uh, you can't use an angle grinder under here at all. Uh, sparks landed on it and it started to smolder. residual smell of smoke which was freaking the owner out which is fair enough because it was freaking me out as well oh, so oh. be aware of that got blowing insulation in it problem is it's gone everywhere so it's also on the um it's also fallen down and, and gone onto the eaves but that's not the problem. And the problem is if the if the insulation on the plasterboard catches, it starts to smolder. You can't put it out with water because water destroys plasterboard. So yeah, we had to pull it out, and then anything up there we had to put out with our hands. And then anything that. Uh, Anything else, we had to put a little bit of water on it, as long as there wasn't any electrics there. So it's certainly uh, just be careful when you're grinding and this stuff is around. All right, there you go. There's your triple grip. Four here, four there, two there. All right. Finally, we're all done. And the house is all done. So if you come for a walk with me, you'll see. Okay. See that there? That's all you're left with. That's all you know that there's a tie down. Okay, so you've got a rod and bolt which go up there, hook into that roof, making sure it doesn't fly off. And then if you come 1200 across, you'll see there's another one which goes up and into that roof and is bolted on. Um, all the screws are back in, everything's back in. Uh, I had to put in some new screws. And as we move down this side, you'll see, obviously, there's certain areas you can't get them in. But we tried to go as close to the windows as possible to get them to hold in. And as we move along, you'll see it's, it's all along here. There's another one there. There's another one there. All right. So that's how you tie down a house. So I hope you liked this video. I certainly didn't like making it. It took me about two and a half days to do that. It was very itchy. But if you did, please subscribe and I'll see what else I can show you as we move forward. All right, I will see you on the next video.